Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you all to the cathedral this morning, uh, and a warm welcome to anybody who is joining us online. Our service today takes place on the traditional territory of the De Kamloops Tais Equipment peoples, Kamloops and Area First Nation. We make this land acknowledgement out of a deep respect and a commitment to healing and reconciliation. When you came in this morning, you should have received a parish bulletin which had an insert filled with announcements. Uh, and so uh, we ask that you make yourself aware of what's happening in the life of the church. I want to pay particular attention to the congregational gathering um, through the Vitality team. That's happening this Saturday um, at 9.30. It's a really important meeting and a really important look at how we are moving into the future and what are those some ways that we will be doing that. And so we definitely encourage and invite you to join us at that meeting. It's going to be an encouraging meeting. It's going to be a hope-filled meeting. And it's going to have lunch. Uh, and so that's going to be a wonderful thing. There is an Eventbrite, which we are asking people to register for. Um, in, and that is simply so we have a rust estimate of numbers. If you haven't, um, when Saturday comes, if you haven't registered an Eventbrite, still come. Uh, but we do want a rough estimate. So if you know that you're going to be there, please uh, work through the Eventbrite. Um, all the other announcements in, you, in that insert is, uh, I commit to you, um, if you need an insert as you go out, please, you can grab that from the back of the church. A couple of things that are not in that insert. Um, one is that as we move to our annual vestry meeting, that's coming forward in the first Sunday of February, um, we obviously elect positions. We elect assembly delegates, we elect members to cathedral committee, um, and you might be thinking about letting your name stand for election in one of those things. If you are, there is a sheet at the back uh, titled Positions for Election that just kind of break down exactly what is involved in each thing. So if you are considering letting your name stand for a cathedral committee, please just pick up one of those sheets. Um, and then also you can talk to me after the service. Along the theme of election, the call for nominations regarding our new bishop has gone out, uh, and the date has been finalized of when the assembly will be. Now that call for nominations went out a little bit later than expected, which means that the date of the assembly has been pushed back. So the new date for our assembly, the date that we will be electing our new bishop, is April 1st, April Fool's Day. Not, a, this is not a prophetic statement on who is being elected. Um, April Fool's Day is not a liturgical day. Um, so, but that weekend, that weekend is going to be the assembly weekend. And as the cathedral, we will be hosting. And so now that the date is set, we will need kind of a robust team of volunteers uh, to help with an opening reception, to help uh, manage check-in, to help manage questions along the way. So if you have any questions or if you're thinking you want to be a part of that, we will need to get that going pretty, pretty quickly. Um, we have poinsettias up here, um, which are, are lovely, but will not, you might not want to zoom in on those, Pat. Um, they might not last another week. So if you want to take a set of poinsettias home with you, please do so after the service today. I also want to let you know that on Monday, the 23rd, which is not um, tomorrow, but is the next Monday, we will be doing a, a funeral service for Jennifer Britton. Jim Britton is a member of our congregation. Jennifer, his wife, was a longtime member a long while ago. Um, and we're going to be having a service uh, for her. She has passed away. Um, and Jim wanted to encourage and invite anybody from the parish, even though you might not have known her, uh, to come and be a part of that service. Um, and I would encourage you as well to come and support Jim uh, during that service. After our service, we have a time of tea and coffee and refreshments, and that is in our parish hall. Uh, and if you uh, were able to join us, we ask that you please do. But we are here to worship. And so we stand and we sing 
our opening hymn, which is in More Voices, number 79, Spirit, Open My Heart. continue on page 185 of our Green Book of Alternative Services. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. You may be seated as I invite Melissa forward to lead a prayer with our children. I invite the children to come and join me as they would like to. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and I invite the congregation to pray with us. Uh, the prayer's on page two of your bulletin. 
Loving God, we give thanks for these children gathered with us here in this space and for those at home with their families. We pray for these children that, that they, they will come, come to know, know you and, and grow in, in their, their faith. faith. We pray for their grandparents and parents that, that in, in the, the busyness, busyness of life, life they, they will see you as they guide and nourish their children. Their children. We pray for ourselves that, that we, we may find ways, ways to support, support connect, connect with, and, and pray, pray for, for these, these families. families. May these children engage with you in adventures, dwell on your goodness, find you in the moments of difficulty, and recognize your presence through all of their days. Bless their time together this morning as they learn, pray, and play. Amen. And we sing together. collect for today. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray the prayer for the election of our bishop, Almighty God giver of all good gifts. Grant your blessing on the clergy and laity who will assemble for the election of a bishop. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding that a chief pastor may be chosen who shall minister before you to the glory of your name. The good government of the flock committed to their charge and the welfare of the Holy Church through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may remain seated for our readings. The first reading this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord. And my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations 
that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers, kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Hear what the Spirit says to all people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 40, found on page 755 in your Green Book of Alternative Services. We will read the psalm responsibly by the full verse, and I will lead. Psalm 40, verses 1 to 12. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted, he lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, oh that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offerings and sin offerings have you have not required. And but so I, I said, said Behold, Behold, I, I come. come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me, I love to do your will, O my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I, I proclaim righteousness, righteousness in the great congregation. congregation. Behold, Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, Lord you know. know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are, you are the Lord. Lord. Do, Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit says to all people. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
sing our gradual hymn, which is number 508 in common praise, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. saw Jesus coming toward him, and he declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I myself have seen, and I testify that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following him, he said to them, What are you looking for? He said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated as anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. and a lamp unto our feet. May you bless the words that are spoken. May you bless the words that are heard. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Well, the Bible contains a whole lot of images. 
And a lot of the images are quite striking, they're quite visceral, um, I think they're quite emotive. One of the most popular images, or the popular kind of iconic scenes in Scripture, is taken from Psalms, and it's from Psalm 23, right? That, that begins, he makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. And can you picture that in your mind, of how lovely and idyllic that would be? Can you see the, the deep and vibrant green of the grass, which is lush and inviting? You just kind of want to take off your shoes and dig your, dig your toes into the grass. Can you, can you picture the water which glistens with white sparkles um, dancing from this blue uh, kind of scene? And truly, there are times in our lives where God leads us into those blissful experiences, where everything seems harmonious and idyllic and calm. But then there are times where we feel like we're walking through the mud, where we feel stuck in the muck and we feel dirty and tired. And we have a psalm for that too. And that's Psalm 40 that we heard. Psalm 40 puts forward this equally visceral image. It talks of, in some translations we'll say desolate pits. Some translations will use the phrase slimy pits. This pit of mud and mire and filth. And while the psalm is spoken on the other end of that, like David, who is attributed to have write, written the psalm, is looking back... So he's kind of progressed beyond that. But it does articulate the reality of that experience, even in the life of faith. So today, let's look at what faith might look like when we aren't in the green pastures of Psalm 23. If you do want to follow along, then you can turn in your BASs to Psalm 40 that we just read. Um, We'll kind of go through that a little bit this morning. The psalm begins, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. Now let's just tackle that word, patiently. (laughs) Put your hand up if you wait patiently. You're not quick enough. Oh, one person put in their hand up. Very good. Um, Waiting is hard, isn't it? And even, even the most patient of people sometimes find it difficult. One of the things that I have inherited from my father is the uncanny ability to pick the slowest line in the grocery store every single time. Doesn't matter how many people are ahead of us, doesn't matter what they have in their cart. The Norman family will be staying put for about 20 minutes every time. I think there's been some times where Solomon has asked Alicia, can you please have dad not pick the line this time? Um, Right? Waiting can be frustrating. It can be annoying. And I think we do a little bit of a disservice when we don't recognize that. Or when we look at this psalm, this verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and assume that, well, this describes... Um, David's attitude of just, you know, sitting around, maybe in the lotus position, with eyes closed and palms up, and everything is just nice and serene and great. It's not what he's talking about. In fact, the Hebrew text is a whole lot more emotive. It's a whole lot more visceral. Literally, in Hebrew, what David writes is, I waited, and I waited for the Lord. And in Scripture, whenever Scripture, like so Hebrew and Greek didn't have punctuation. So the way that they describe emotion and where they put emphasis on things was by duplicating words. So whenever you see a duplication of a word, right, Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, Simon, Simon, I waited, I waited. It's adding emphasis and it's adding emotion into what's being said. So David remembers this feeling of waiting and how sometimes waiting can feel drawn out and prolonged. And so I want to say that if any of you today or online 
are in a season of waiting. Yes, it's hard. And yes, it can be frustrating. And yes, particularly when we're waiting for something good, it can be really difficult to navigate. Cry out your questions of how long and where are you, O God, and why me? The Psalms allow us to do this, and so can you. But what David did, and what you are encouraged to do, is to continually wait for the Lord. David directed his experience and his voice to God. Later in the psalm, David says, Here I am your servant, and I desire to do your will, O God. David was stubbornly faithful. What would it look like for you in the season of waiting to be open to the possibility of God's presence with you in that time? Because faith doesn't mean ease. It doesn't mean prosperity. Faith doesn't mean a problem-free life. A life of faith may, in fact, involve times of wrestling in this desolate pit or this slimy pit, the kind of pit that makes us feel kind of icky and kind of weighed down. Again, I wonder if there's anybody who's going through that. I wonder if there's anybody who feels like they're just kind of sinking in the mud. Again, the call of faith is easy when we're in the lush pastures, isn't it, of Psalm 23. That's easy. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the goodness of God. But what about when we're stuck in the pits? What then? In the classic book, Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan um, describes the experience of the main character, who is the pilgrim, who is on his way uh, to the celestial city, um, and his name is Christian. And it describes him falling into a pit. And Bunyan calls it the slough of despond. It is the mire of discontent. The bog of discomfort. It's this beautiful kind of or visceral image. And in the book, Christian, who is a pilgrim, he falls into this pit right at the start of his journey. Just right when he embarks on his life of faith, when he's filled with vigor and enthusiasm, he falls in the mud. And I particularly love that scene because I think it's real. It's a real look at what sometimes we feel like we have to tackle in our lives. Faith isn't escapism, isn't, isn't a pipe dream. And in this book, um, Christian, he falls into this, into this pit along with somebody else whose name is Pliable. And Pliable says, uh, well, if this is the happiness that God promises, I'm done. And he leaves. Pilgrim, or Christian, however, stays. And he struggles. But there's good news in waiting. As hard as it might be, there is good news. As difficulties as those pits of discouragement may feel, it's not the whole story. Psalm 40, as much as it articulates this hard reality that sometimes befalls us, it is a psalm of hope. It is a psalm of confidence. I waited and I waited for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. God is not deaf to our cries. God is not blind to what we go through. The word turn actually means to stoop down. So it's not the case that, um, that God was looking somewhere else and then just all of a sudden turned to, oh, Blair, you're there. No, that's not kind of what it is. No, that he turned to me means he stooped down towards me. He reached out to me. He stooped to me. He heard me calling. He reached out and lifted me up and set my foot upon a rock. It's this powerful image because all of the activity of God there is in God's initiative. We don't reach up and we don't grasp onto God who might be trying to be elusive. It's not up to us to manage ourselves. God reaches down like a parent who reaches down to take the hand of an infant. God actively and lovingly reaches out to us. And that's the truth of the gospel. 
that no matter how muddy our life might feel, no matter how stuck in the mud we might feel, God, God comes to us in Jesus. Jesus is the full enfleshment of God stepping into our world to be with us and even just to wait with us. That's why Andrew went out and found Peter. We found him. We found the Messiah. We found the one who comes to us to be with us, to save us, to lift us up, to help us. We found the one who will respond to us. So waiting for the Lord is about daring to trust that Jesus is there and that Jesus is working, even if you don't see it. Because the alternative is to say, well, if this is the happiness that God gives, no thank you. If God only gives me disappointment, rejection, and sadness, well, then I'm done. But here's the thing. Does thinking like that actually produce the life and healing that we long for? Like, if we say, well, if this is what God gives me, I'm done, and we kind of leave, does that mean automatically we're out of our mud pits and we're out of our waiting? The psalm says, blessed is the one who makes the Lord their trust, who does not look to the proud or turn to false idols. And often the place that we turn to, honestly, is ourselves, isn't it? We get so frustrated with waiting that we say something like, never mind, I'll do it myself. <laughs> Does that ring true to anybody? <laughs> Have you ever done that? How did that work out for you? <laughs> Again, did that actually produce the life and the healing and the liberation that you're wanting, that you're waiting for? So what we need to do in our waiting, what we need to do in those mud pits, what we need to do when we're struggling is that we need to recognize that there is somebody who comes to us. And that's what this psalm is about. God hears us when we cry. God stoops down, actively reaching into our lives and lifts us out of the mud and sets our feet upon the rock. And it might not be immediate, but in faith we stubbornly hold on to that hope. When Christian, in the Pilgrim's Progress, when Christian is stuck in the slew of despond, and it's in that place that he learns what it means to stand on God's promises. God's promises of forgiveness and of love and of grace and unyielding presence. In fact, Bunyan pictures the promises of God as concrete stones upon which Christian can stand upon as he makes his way through the slew of despond. What sometimes happens is that we only see how God has fully moved in our lives. We only see what God has fully done from the vantage point of the other side. It's only when we see how everything fits together that we can say, oh, I know how God has been with me, how God lifted me up when I was in that time. Just like I am willing to bet that there are people here who may feel waiting or feel like they're struggling through slimy pits, I'm willing to bet there are those here who feel that they know what it means for God to bring them through it, who are now standing on the other side. What would it look like for you to declare that story? Don't you think that story might be beneficial to others? David says, I do not seal my lips, as you know, O Lord. I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly. And yes, that might sound entirely un-Anglican of us, but that's the call of the gospel, to share the good news and to share with each other what God has done for me, what God has done for us. So what's your story? Andrew goes to Peter. Hey, check this out. The good news held out in the psalm is that our external circumstances do not dictate God's love for us or God's presence. No matter what backdrop you see your life set against, whether it be green pastures or slimy bogs, the Savior is with you. 
The incarnation testifies that Jesus enters your world as muddy as it might be. And so while there's no easy answers, I think it is safe to say that when we're in those times, what do we do? We turn to Jesus. And I'm not talking about in some sort of doctrinal way. No, actually turn to him. Dare to believe that he, in all of his presence, is actually with you. Take the time and read the Gospels. Yes, I know you've probably read them. Read them again. But don't read them just to get the events in place. Read them from that deep place in your gut, in your soul. That place where you are sitting in that, that pit, where you are waiting. Read the gospel from that place. And talk to Jesus when you pray. Don't worry about being erudite. Don't worry about having your prayers match the verbiage of our prayer books. Talk to Jesus. There's an old hymn that goes, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Waiting happens. Things may not change right away. But as you continue to hold yourself open to the possibility of Jesus' loving presence for you, you may just find yourself experiencing his promises in a profound way. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please stand. Turning to page 188, let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our prayers, I invite you to assume a position for prayer, as is your custom and as you're able.
your response to gracious God of love and mercy will be grant us peace. Gracious God of love and mercy. Grant us peace. For the peace of the world, for the salvation of all people in God's creation, and for your church throughout all nations, we pray to you for strength and guidance. Gracious God of love and mercy, grant us peace. Let us give thanks to the Lord for our spinning blue planet and the splendor of God's creation. We are reminded of our riches in the beauty of the four seasons. In the coming weeks, we will slowly emerge from the cold and darkness of our winter to the awareness of longer days and early signs of spring. We are thankful for this cycle of new life that the growth and hope of the spring will lead to the glory and warmth of summer. May we be worthy guardians of this earth that God has placed under our care. May we be faithful stewards and aware of the needs of others who are not so fortunate as to live in such a fertile and peaceful region of our planet. Gracious God of love and mercy, grant us peace. We offer prayers for peace in our troubled world. Especially for the conflicts in Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and the ongoing disputes between the leaders of Israel and Palestine Authority. <clears throat> we are sadly reminded daily of so many other parts of our wounded planet where many, many, many innocent people caught up in regional warfare, epidemic diseases are in danger and great distress. We also offer prayers for the peoples of South America, where in many countries, they are placed in danger just to seek a fair, just, and peaceful democracy for their countries. Gracious God of love and mercy, Amen. we give thankful prayer to God for our Anglican Church here at home and throughout the world where the Christian community strives to reach out to so many in need of God's redemption. We pray for Charles, our King, for the leaders of our nations and all in authority that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. For those in Anglican ministry and leadership locally and globally, we pray for Lyndon Nichols, primate, Lynn McNaughton, archbishop, Jane Alexander, assisting bishop, our very reverend Dr. Kyle Norman, Bishop Gordon Light, Barbara Leotskos, Bob Purdy, Sandra Sugden, Len Fraser, and Dan Hines, and for all lay leaders for each of these and for those who support them. In the territory of the people, we pray for the people of St. Paul's Cathedral here, Kamloops, the very Reverend Dr. Kyle Norman, Dean, his wife Alicia, and family, the Rev Right Reverend Gordon Light, honorary assistant, the Reverend Victor Gundell and his wife Sarah, our hospital, Priest. The Reverend Dan Hines, his wife Robin, the Reverend Barb Leotskus, the Reverend Bob Purdy, his wife Trish, the Reverend Sandra Sungan, and their families. We pray for assisting Bishop Jane Alexander for new vocations and leadership in the church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Nigeria, the Anglican Communion. In our sister diocese of Montreal, we give thanks for St. Luke Hemingford, Trinity Havelock, and St. Simeon's La Chute and their lay um, administrators. In our St. Paul's prayer cycle, we pray for Denise Anderson, Dave Barker, DJ Clark, Margaret Hawley, Tony Lazulchuk, 
and Hilary Schultz. We pray for the catering ministry. The Cathedral Memorial Fall flowers on the altar are giving in love and memory of our son, Daniel Patch, from my wife Carol, myself, and our family. I also uh, would like to, this past week, sadly learn uh, and, and acknowledge the passing of Jean Knox and remember this same date in passing of her dearly departed husband, the Deacon Phil Knox. They both passed away on that date, many years apart. She was much loved within our cathedral as was her husband. Gracious God of love and mercy, we pray for all within our parish family who are sick or in distress. We name aloud or silently within our hearts those who are in special need and remember those whose names have been placed in the prayer bowl on the altar this morning. Gracious God of love and mercy, we further offer our prayers for all those who have left this life for a new life of the resurrection. And we are comforted with the belief that in time we will all dwell in your house of many mansions and exist within the communion of saints. Gracious God of love and mercy, loving God, you have blessed us with the gift of eternal life and have renewed us by your grace. We are not worthy of Christ's willing death on the cross and the free gift of redemption that is ours by the simple act of acceptance, we are thankful. May we strive to walk in his footsteps and be ever thankful for the peace that passes understanding. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to Christ's table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace, peace. and God's peace upon all who are with us online today. Our offertory hymn is in More Voices, number 194, Bread of Life, Feed My Soul.
Living God, you have revealed your Son as the Messiah. May we hear his word and follow it, and live as children of light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Eucharistic prayer is prayer number five. You may find this on page 204. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder, and for our life which comes from you. By your power you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves. But we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread and gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He said the blessing and he gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory, Glory to you forever. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory to you. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and the love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Your kingdom come, your will be 
that on earth as in heaven give us the day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Psalm sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, which means that this is a tangible expression of God's presence and love. And if you are in a place where you need to receive that, for whatever reason, then come forward with expectation, because he is here. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
I invite you to please stand for our concluding prayers on page 214. God of glory, you nourish us with the bread from heaven. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us your light might shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May Jesus be for you an all surrounding presence, lighting the night, perfuming the day, gladdening all places and sanctifying all pursuits. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen.
I am being told that we need to announce the men's breakfast <laughs> this Saturday. This coming Sunday at 8 o'clock, Jim? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. 8 o'clock, yes. Wonderful. Our recessional hymn is number 381, Praise My Soul. 